Part One, the Minstrel. One cold winter evening, King Arthur and his knights were sitting at the Round Table in the castle of Camelot. Suddenly, a tall young man came into the great hall. He had dark hair and dark, sad eyes. His clothes were old but clean. He had a harp under his arm. Welcome to Camelot, young man," said King Arthur. "Are you a minstrel?" "Yes, Your Majesty, I am," said the young man. "Where are you from?" asked King Arthur. "I'm from Cornwall," answered the minstrel. "Well," said King Arthur, "we like minstrels and their stories. Tell us a good story about brave knights and lovely ladies." Do you know the story of Sir Tristan of Lyonnais? Asked one of the knights. Yes, I do. Answered the minstrel. Sir Tristan is a brave knight, but his story is very sad. Sit down and tell us. Said King Arthur. Everyone in the hall was interested in the story of Sir Tristan of Lyonnais. The minstrel sat on a stool and started telling his story to the king and his knights. Sometimes he spoke. And sometimes he sang and played his harp. This is the story he told. For many years there were wars between Cornwall and Ireland. The Irish often sailed across the sea to Cornwall and attacked it. There were terrible battles, and many people died. King Mark of Cornwall wanted peace, but the Irish did not. He did not know what to do. One day he asked his cousin. King Rivelin of Lyonnais for help. Help me fight the Irish, and you can marry my beautiful sister," said King Mark to his cousin. "The Irish are my enemies too," said King Rivelin. "I'll help you fight them. Together we can win, and I'll marry your beautiful sister." King Rivelin and King Mark fought together and won the war against the Irish. King Rivelin married King Mark's sister. And they returned to his castle in Lyonnais. They loved each other and were very happy together, but their happiness did not continue for long. A year later, King Rivelin was killed in battle. At the same time, the queen had a son, but she died soon after. Before dying, she called her servant Rual. Rual, I'm dying. Said the young, beautiful queen, "Take my child and call him Tristan. His name means sadness. It comes from the French word triste. Look after him and love him like a son. And when he is a man, he must go and meet my brother, King Mark of Cornwall. He will help him." Rual and his wife loved little Tristan, and they looked after him. He became a strong, brave boy. He learned to use a sword, a spear, and to ride a horse. He also learned to play the harp and speak other languages. When Tristan became a man, he left Lyonnais and went to Cornwall to meet his uncle, King Mark. The king lived in a big castle in Tintagel. Tristan entered the great hall of the castle and saw his uncle for the first time. Your Majesty. I'm your nephew Tristan from Lyonnais. My nephew, Tristan, my sister's son," said King Mark, looking at the tall young man. "Welcome to Tintagel. This is your new home. I'm very happy you're here. My knights and I will teach you many things, and you'll become a great knight." Everyone welcomed Tristan to the castle. He was happy with his uncle, who loved him like a son. He became a famous knight and fought in many battles. The people of Cornwall knew about his great courage and liked him. But some of the knights and nobles were jealous of him because he was King Mark's favorite knight. One day, Sir Morholt from Ireland came to Tintagel Castle. He was a gigantic man with a dark face. And strong hands. King Gorman of Ireland sent me here, he said in a loud voice. He wants a tribute from you, King Mark. A tribute? Said King Mark, surprised. 
Yes, a tribute, said Sir Morholt. If you send the tribute, King German won't attack Cornwall. What is the tribute? asked King Mark. You must send him thirty noble boys who will become his servants. What? cried King Mark. Thirty of our noble boys. This is terrible. You must do what King German wants, said Sir Morholt. Or one of your knights can fight me. If your knight wins, you don't have to send the tribute to the king. But no one will fight me. I'm the strongest knight in the world, and everyone's afraid of me. Everyone was silent, but Tristan's face was red with anger. I will fight you, Sir Morholt, said Tristan. I'm not afraid of you. Everyone was surprised and looked at Tristan. No, Tristan, don't fight him. He's too big and strong, said King Mark. You can't win. He'll kill you. No, Uncle Mark, said Tristan. I am a knight of Cornwall, and I must fight him. Sir Morholt looked at the young man in front of him and started laughing. Tristan was much shorter and thinner than the Irish giant. I'll meet you in a week on a small island opposite the castle, said Sir Morholt. Come alone early in the morning. I'll be there, said Tristan, looking at Sir Morholt's cold eyes. Part 2 Sir Morholt A week later, Sir Morholt came to the island early in the morning. He pulled his boat onto the beach. Then Tristan came to the island, but he pushed his boat away. Why did you push your boat away? asked Sir Morholt. You'll need it when you decide to run away from me. Tristan looked at him bravely and said, I won't run away because I'm not afraid of you. Remember, only one man will leave this island alive. Sir Morholt laughed and raised his big sword. Tristan did the same, and they started fighting. Tristan was young and light, and he moved quickly. Sir Morholt was slow and heavy, but he was very strong. Tristan jumped here and there, and soon Sir Morholt was tired, but he continued fighting. The fight went on for many hours. Suddenly, Sir Morholt wounded Tristan's leg with his big sword. There's poison on my sword, said Sir Morholt, laughing. If you don't find someone to cure your wound, you'll be very ill, and only a few people in the world can cure it. Tristan was very angry and raised his heavy sword. He cut through Sir Morholt's helmet and wounded his head. A small piece of Tristan's sword broke and remained in Sir Morholt's head. The Irish giant fell to the ground. He was almost dead. That evening, some of Sir Morholt's men came to the island. They were surprised to see him on the ground, wounded. They put him on their boat and sailed back to Ireland, where he died. His sister was the Queen of Ireland, and she was very sad because she loved her brother. She took the small piece of sword from Sir Morholt's head and put it in a small blue box in her room. One day I'll find the man who killed my brother, she thought. Tristan returned to Tintagel Castle, but his wound made him very ill. King Mark called the best doctors of Cornwall, but they could not help him. Tristan must go to Ireland to cure his wound said an old doctor. Because the poison comes from there. The Queen of Ireland knows everything about poisons and herbs. She can help him. Then Tristan must go to Ireland immediately, said King Mark. Get a ship ready. Tristan went to Ireland dressed as a minstrel and called himself Tantris. He did not want anyone to know that he was Sir Tristan. He played the harp and sang beautifully, and the Irish liked his songs. 
One day, King German heard about the minstrel and called him to his castle. King German and his queen had only one child, a lovely daughter called Isolda. She was the most beautiful girl in the world, with long blonde hair, blue eyes, and a lovely smile. Everyone talked about her beauty. The king wanted Isolda to play the harp, but there were no good teachers in Ireland. Tantris entered the great hall of the castle with his harp. He walked slowly, because his leg hurt. Are you the famous minstrel Tantris? Asked King German. Yes, I'm the minstrel," said Tristan. "What's wrong with your leg?" asked the king. "I wounded it during a terrible battle," said Tristan. "People say you play the harp beautifully," said King German. "Play something for me." Tristan played the harp and sang a lovely song, and the king was pleased. Can you teach my daughter Isolda to play the harp? Asked the king. Of course I can," said Tristan happily. "Very well," said the king. "The queen will cure your wound with her special herbs, and you will teach Isolda to play the harp. You can live here at the castle." "Thank you, your majesty," said Tristan, smiling. "I'm glad everyone thinks I'm a minstrel," thought Tristan. Now my leg will get better, and I'll soon go back to Cornwall. Tristan's leg slowly got better. Every morning he taught Isolda to play the harp and sing. Isolda learned quickly, and the king was very happy. During the harp lessons, Tristan often thought, "Isolda is very beautiful." Part three, the dragon. Tristan stayed in Ireland at King German's castle and taught Isolda to play the harp and sing. He and Isolda became good friends and often laughed and talked together. Isolda became a good singer and harp player. She played the harp and sang songs for her parents and other nobles. After a year, Tristan returned to Cornwall. King Mark was very happy to see his nephew. Every day, Tristan told his uncle about Isolda's great beauty. Isolda is the most beautiful girl in the world, and she is gentle and kind. Her hair is the color of gold, and her eyes are the color of the sea. She plays the harp well and sings with a sweet voice. King Mark listened to Tristan and said, "Isolda." Is King German's only daughter, and she is beautiful and kind. If I marry her, there will be peace between our two countries. The king's knights and nobles agreed with him, but there was one problem. We agree with you," said one noble. "But how can you marry Princess Isolda? The king and queen of Ireland hate us because Sir Morholt was killed here." He's right," said another noble. King Mark was silent for a moment and then said, "I want to marry Isolda. I'll have the most beautiful wife in the world, and there will be peace between our countries. We must find a way." He looked at Tristan, but he didn't say anything. Tristan knew what his uncle wanted. Uncle Mark. Said Tristan, "I know this is a dangerous adventure. When the Queen of Ireland discovers who I am, she'll be very angry. She hates the knight who killed her brother Morholt. But I'm not afraid. I'll bring Isolda to you, Uncle Mark, and you can marry her." "You're brave and loyal, Tristan," said King Mark. "Be very careful." Tristan sailed to Ireland on a small ship with thirty men. They arrived in Ireland on a stormy night. I must think of a plan, thought Tristan. I must bring Isolda to King Mark. At that time, a terrible green dragon lived in Ireland. 
It killed a lot of people and burned houses and trees with its fire. No one could kill it. King German was worried and didn't know what to do. One day he said to his nobles, The man who kills the terrible green dragon will marry my lovely daughter Isolde. Everyone in Ireland was talking about this, and Tristan heard about it too. He was excited because he wanted to kill the dragon. He had a heavy sword, a long lance, and a big shield. He rode to the valley of the dragon and saw the dead bodies of other knights who tried to kill it. Suddenly, Tristan saw the angry dragon. It was a terrible green monster with long white teeth, angry red eyes, and a long tail. Fire and smoke came out of its mouth. What an ugly creature! Thought Tristan. He attacked the dragon with his lance and sword. They fought for more than an hour, and in the end, Tristan killed it with his long lance. The dragon's last breath was hot and poisonous. Tristan soon felt very bad. He went to the dead dragon and opened its big mouth. Then he cut out its tongue, and put it in his bag. This tongue will show that I killed the dragon. He thought. The poison made him ill, and he fell to the ground. Later that day, one of the king's nobles called Seniscal came to the valley of the dragon. He liked Isolde very much, and he wanted to marry her. But he was a coward. And was afraid of the dragon. When Seniscal saw the dead dragon, he thought, "This is wonderful. Someone already killed the dragon. I can tell the king I killed it, and then I can marry Isolde. But first, I must cut off the dead dragon's head to show the king." He cut off the head and took it to the king. "Your Majesty," he said. I killed the green dragon. Look, here is its head. Now I can marry your daughter, Princess Isolde. The king knew Seniscal was a coward, and he did not believe him. But the head of the dragon was in front of him. When Isolde heard this, she started crying and could not stop. What's wrong, Isolde? Asked the queen. Oh, mother. Said Isolde, crying. I don't like Seniscal, and I don't want to marry him. Don't cry, my dear," said the queen. "I don't believe Seniscal killed the dragon. Come with me quickly." That evening they went to the valley and found the dead dragon and Tristan on the ground. Look! cried Isolde. It's Tantris, the minstrel, but he's dressed like a knight. I don't understand. Tristan heard Isolde's sweet voice and slowly moved his head. "Are you Tantris?" asked the queen. He opened his eyes and said, "Yes, I am." "Why are you in Ireland?" asked the queen. "I came to Ireland with some merchants," he said. "Did you kill the dragon?" asked the queen. "I knew there was a terrible dragon in your country, and I decided to kill it." Said Tristan. The queen listened and smiled. Tantris, you did a great thing and helped our country. The king will be very pleased. But you aren't well because the dragon poisoned you. Come with us to the castle, and I'll cure you again with my herbs. Part four, Seniscal. Once again, the Irish queen cured Tristan with her magic herbs. And Isolde helped her. After a week, he got better and went to the great hall to see King German. There was a big dinner in honor of Seniscal, who wanted to marry Isolde. King German, the Queen, Isolde, knights, nobles, and their ladies were sitting at a long table. Seniscal talked to his friends and told them about his fight with the dragon. It was a long, terrible fight," he said loudly. "But I was never afraid. I got very near to the green monster, 
and looked at his red eyes. I saw his long white teeth and felt his hot breath in my face. I knew I had to kill him, and in the end I did. Then I cut his head off. The king was silent, but the queen was not. She looked at Seneschal and said, You didn't kill the dragon. You found the dead dragon and cut his head off. What? said Seneschal angrily. I killed the dragon with my lance after a long fight, said Tristan, getting up from his chair. You're a liar and a coward. Seneschal got up from his chair and said, Everyone knows I'm a brave man. I brought the king the head of the dragon. Look in the dragon's mouth, said the queen. Seneschal opened the dragon's mouth and cried, The tongue's gone. Yes, said Tristan. Everyone was surprised and looked at Tristan. He opened his bag and pulled out the dragon's tongue. Oh! Everyone said when they saw the long green tongue. Liar! Coward! Everyone shouted at Seneschal. No! cried Seneschal angrily. You're a liar and a thief. I killed the dragon and you took its tongue. Fight me in battle and we'll see who marries Princess Isolde. Very well, said Tristan. I'll fight you, Seneschal, and I'll win. Very well. There will be a tournament in three days, said King German. And everyone is invited. The winner will marry my daughter Isolde. Everyone started talking about the tournament, and there was a lot of excitement in the Great Hall. Who do you think will win? asked one noble. I don't know, but they're both young and strong, answered his friend. It will be a great fight, said a young knight. And the winner will have a beautiful prize. Princess Isolde, said a noble lady. On the morning of the tournament, Tristan went to prepare his horse. Isolde brought some of the Queen's herbs to Tristan's room, but he wasn't there. His big sword was on the table, and she looked at it. How strange, she thought. A small piece of the sword is missing. She immediately thought of the blue box with the small piece of sword from her Uncle Morholt's head. Oh no, she thought. Is this the sword that killed my uncle? She ran to her mother's room and got the blue box. She opened it slowly and saw the small piece of sword inside. Then she looked at Tristan's sword and said, the piece comes from the same sword. I must tell my mother. She went to her mother and said, Come with me to Tantris's room. When they got there, she said, The minstrel Tantris is not a minstrel. He's Sir Tristan of Leoness, who killed Uncle Morholt. Look at his sword. She showed her mother Tristan's sword and the small piece in the blue box. You're right, Isolde said the queen, surprised. This is the sword that killed Morholt. Isolde's face was red with anger. Now I'm going to kill Tristan with this sword. No, Isolde, cried the queen. What are you saying? Tristan fought against Morholt in a fair battle. He's a brave knight and a good man. Let's talk to him. When Tristan returned to his room, the queen and Isolde confronted him and he told them the truth. Yes, I'm Sir Tristan of Leoness. My uncle is King Mark of Cornwall, a rich and important king. He sent me here because he wants to marry Isolde and bring peace to our countries. The queen listened to Tristan and said, You came to Ireland for a good reason. We want peace too. A marriage between our families is a good idea. But mother, said Isolde, Tristan killed my uncle Morholt. Morholt was my brother, and I loved him very much, said the Queen. But we must forget the bad things of the past and build a future for our countries. You're a good Queen, said Tristan. Isolde was silent. Then 
the queen looked at her daughter and smiled. My dear Isolde, King Mark is a great king, and you will be his queen, the Queen of Cornwall. You'll be happy with him. But he's much older than I am, said Isolde. King Mark isn't an old man, said Tristan. He's tall and good looking, and he's not a coward like Seniscal. He's a brave man. Did you hear that, Isolde? asked the Queen. Isolde looked at her mother and asked, Will I love him, mother? Yes, Isolde. You'll love him, she answered quietly and looked away. Isolde smiled. But now Tristan must win the tournament, said the Queen. If he doesn't, you must marry Seniscal. I'll fight and win, said Tristan. Please win, Tristan, said Isolde. I don't want to marry Seniscal. He's a coward and a liar. Part 5 The Green Bottle The tournament started early in the afternoon, and hundreds of people were there to watch it. King German, the Queen, and Isolde sat in the first seats. Isolde was very anxious. Both men wore heavy armour. Seniscal rode a black horse, and Tristan rode a white one. Seniscal fought bravely because he wanted to marry Isolde so much, but in the end, Tristan killed Seniscal. He was the winner. Hooray for Sir Tristan! cheered the people. Hooray! Now Tristan could take Isolde to his uncle, King Mark. The Queen loved Isolde and wanted her to be happy with King Mark. Isolde must fall in love with King Mark, she thought. Then she'll be happy. I must prepare the best love potion in the world for them. When they drink this love potion, they will always love each other. She quickly went to her herb garden and took the magic herbs for the love potion. Then she went to her secret room in the castle and made the potion. When it was ready, she called Lady Bragney. Who was Isolde's maid and friend? Listen carefully, Lady Bragney," said the Queen. "You'll go with Isolde to Cornwall. The ship leaves tomorrow." "Yes, my Queen," said Lady Bragney. "I'm happy to go with Isolde." On the day of her marriage, you must give this green bottle to Isolde and King Mark," said the Queen. "Tell them to drink this excellent wine, a good luck present from me. Remember, Bragney." They both must drink it. This is the strongest love potion in the world. When they drink it, they will always love each other. Their love will be the greatest in the world, and it will never die. Do you understand? Yes, I do," said Lady Bragney. She left the Queen's room with the green bottle in her hands. The next day, Tristan's ship left Ireland for Cornwall. The sea voyage took many days. There was stormy weather at sea, and Isolde sat in her cabin all day. Sometimes she was sad because she thought about her mother and father. Tristan often visited her and told her stories of old Cornwall. He also told her the story of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Isolde liked listening to his stories. During the stormy weather, Lady Bragney was often ill. And stayed in bed in her cabin. One evening, Tristan and Isolde played the harp and sang together all evening. Tristan was thirsty.、Uh, do you have anything to drink in the cabin? Lady Bragney brought a bottle of wine," said Isolde, pointing to a green bottle on a shelf. "Would you like some?" "Um, yes, I would," said Tristan. Isolde took two gold cups. And they drank the wine together. They did not know that it was the queen's love potion. The green bottle was soon empty. Tristan and Isolde talked and laughed together, but something strange was happening to them. They started looking into each other's eyes and feeling strange. What was this new feeling? They were in love. That evening. The sea became calm, and Bragney soon felt better. 
she went to find Isolde and immediately saw the empty bottle and the two gold cups. But Bragni had a cold heart and did not say anything to Tristan and Isolde. This is terrible, she thought. They both drank the potion and they will be unhappy lovers until they die. But they must never know the truth. Oh, why did this happen? That night when Isolde was sleeping, Bragni took the empty green bottle and threw it into the sea. The next morning, Tristan went to visit Isolde in her cabin. Isolde, said Tristan, something strange happened to me last night and now I'm in love with you. Oh, Tristan, said Isolde, smiling, the same thing happened to me. I'm in love with you too. They looked at each other and embraced and kissed. Our love is impossible, Tristan. I must marry King Mark. Yes, I know, said Tristan sadly. King Mark is my uncle and I love him like a father. But I love you more than anyone or anything in the world, my sweet Isolde. We must enjoy these few wonderful days at sea together, said Isolde. These are the only days we have, said Tristan. When we get to Cornwall, our happiness will end, but not our love. No, our love will never end, said Isolde, touching his hand. Never, ever. Part 6. Queen Isolde of Cornwall Tristan's ship arrived in Cornwall at Tintagel, and before getting off, Tristan and Isolde said goodbye to each other. You'll always be my only love, sweet Isolde, said Tristan. My heart will always be yours. And you'll always be the only person in my heart, Tristan, said Isolde. They embraced for the last time. When King Mark met Isolde, he was amazed by her beauty and her sweet voice. He loved her immediately. She became King Mark's wife and the Queen of Cornwall. There was a great celebration with music and dancing that lasted many days. The people of Cornwall liked their new queen. King Mark was very happy with Isolde, but she was not because she loved only Tristan. A year later, in the spring, Isolde decided to go hunting in the forest with Lady Bragney and other nobles. King Mark called Tristan and said, Isolde and Lady Bragney want to go hunting in the forest today. I don't want them to go alone, because it's dangerous. Go with them and look after them. I trust only you, Tristan. Tristan's heart jumped when he heard his oldest name. Very well, Uncle Mark, he said. I'll go hunting with them. During the hunt, Lady Bragney and the others took different paths in the forest. Soon, Isolde and Tristan were alone. They stopped near a small river. They were still in love. I'm happy we're alone, dear Isolde said Tristan quietly. I am too, Tristan, said Isolde, looking into Tristan's eyes. But our love's wrong. I know. It's wrong and impossible, said Tristan. But you're in my heart and you'll always be there. My love for you is stronger than my loyalty to the king. Isolde could not speak. They embraced and stayed near the river until sunset. After that day, they met at the river in the forest many times. One day, some of King Mark's nobles saw them. They were jealous of Tristan because he was the best knight in Cornwall. They decided to tell King Mark. Don't trust Sir Tristan and Queen Isolde, said one noble. I saw them sitting together. At the river in the forest. My nephew and my wife are good friends and nothing more, said King Mark angrily. I trust them both. They are more than good friends, King Mark, said another noble. 
Don't say these bad things about my wife and my nephew, cried King Mark angrily. Tristan and Isolde continued seeing each other in the forest, and one day Sir Melot saw them. He was a bad man and hated Tristan. He immediately went to tell King Mark. I saw Sir Tristan and Queen Isolde together again in the forest, he said. I don't believe you, said King Mark. You're a liar. Then come with me, quickly, and you'll see them too, he said. King Mark got on his horse and followed Sir Melot to the forest. They hid behind some trees and saw Tristan and Isolde sitting near the stream. Tristan was touching Isolde's long, blonde hair. Now King Mark believed Sir Melot, and he was very angry. That evening he called all of his nobles and explained everything to them. Sir Tristan is a traitor, cried King Mark. I loved him like a son and taught him everything he knows. I trusted him, and I trusted Queen Isolde. But now he must die. King Mark had tears in his eyes. No, said the oldest noble. We don't like Sir Tristan, but he is a brave knight. We may need him for future battles. He is the best knight we have, and the people of Cornwall love him. He is their hero. If you kill him, the people will be angry. Send him away, and if we need him for future battles, we'll call him. You are right, said King Mark. He must leave Cornwall immediately, and never see Isolde again. The Queen is young. And she'll forget Tristan soon. King Mark sent Tristan away from Cornwall, and Isolde was very sad. She stayed in her room and cried because she could not forget Tristan. Tristan left Cornwall, and he was very unhappy. He did not want to be a knight any more because he did not have a king. Now he was alone in the world. He decided to become a minstrel. And went from village to village. He played the harp and sang the story of his love for Isolde. This was the end of the minstrel's story. He stopped singing and playing, and suddenly there was silence in the great hall of King Arthur's castle. Part seven, Sir Tristan of Lyonnes. King Arthur looked at him and said. Minstrel, why do you know the story of Tristan and Isolde? The minstrel got up from his stool and said, "Because I am Tristan of Lyonnes." Everyone in the great hall was very surprised. King Arthur stood up and said, "Welcome to Camelot, Sir Tristan, and welcome to the Round Table." Many years ago, Merlin, the magician, said. One day, Sir Tristan will be a knight of the Round Table. He was right. Look, there's a seat with your name next to Sir Lancelot. Sit down, Sir Tristan. Today's an important day for us because we have another brave knight at the Round Table. This is a great honor for me," said Tristan, sitting down. "Thank you, King Arthur." The other knights cheered and welcomed him. Sir Tristan became an important knight of the Round Table, and the other knights liked him because he was brave, kind, and loyal. Only the bravest knights could sit at the Round Table. He fought for King Arthur in many wars and battles, and had many adventures in the kingdom. But he was always sad because he could not forget Isolde. He thought about her all the time, day and night. The years passed, and one day he went to Brittany in France, where he met the daughter of the Duke of Arundel. Her name was Isolde too, Isolde of the White Hands. She was a pretty young girl, and Tristan liked her. Why do I like Isolde of the White Hands? He thought. 
Do I like her smile or her voice? Do I like her lovely white hands, or do I like her name? Do I love her? Tristan could not answer these questions, but he decided to marry her. Isolde of the White Hands was a good, loving wife, and Tristan was a kind, loyal husband. But he was not happy, because he could not forget Queen Isolde. She was his first and only love. Isolde of the White Hands knew this, and she was jealous. Why can't Tristan love me like he loves her? She thought. One day, Tristan fought in a battle to help his wife's brother Cahedine. It was a long, terrible battle, and Tristan was wounded with a poisoned spear. His wound made him very ill. He could not walk and stayed in bed a long time, but he did not get better. He got worse. I'm. Very ill," said Tristan to Cahadin. "And I think I'm going to die soon." "No, Tristan," said Cahadin. "Don't say that. You helped me during the battle, and now I want to help you. Tell me what I can do, my friend." "Only Queen Isolde of Cornwall can cure my wound, because the spear was poisoned," said Tristan weakly. "She." Learned the secrets of the magic herbs from her mother. Then I'll sail to Tintagel immediately and ask Queen Isolde to come here and cure you," said Cadine. "Oh, Cadine, thank you," said Tristan. "If Isolde comes with you, raise the white sail on your ship. But if she doesn't, then raise the black sail." Very well," said Cahadin. "I'm leaving this evening." Isolde of the White Hands heard this conversation, and she was angry and jealous. Cahadin sailed to Cornwall and told King Mark and Queen Isolde about Tristan's wound. "I must go and cure his wound with my magic herbs," said Queen Isolde. "I'm the only person who can save his life." King Mark looked at his wife, and said, "Time is helping me to forget many things. I think I can trust you now, Isolde. Go, and cure Tristan's wound." Yes, my king," said Queen Isolde quietly. "You can trust me." Isolde left Cornwall with Cahadine the same day, with some bottles of herbs and potions. When the ship arrived near Tristan's castle, Cahadine raised the white sail. Tristan was very weak, and could not get up from bed, and look out of the window. He called his wife, and said, "Go, and look out of the window. Cahadine's ship will be here soon. Can you see it?" His older of the white hands went to the window. And saw Cahadine's ship, with its big white sail. Oh no! She thought the sail's white. Queen Isolde is here. She was very jealous. Yes, Tristan said Isolde of the White Hands. Cahadine's ship is here. What colour is the sail? Asked Tristan weakly. The sail is black, answered Isolde of the White Hands. Oh. No, Isolde, my love," said Tristan sadly. "You didn't come to me. I won't see your beautiful face again. Oh, dearest Isolde, dearest Isolde." And then he closed his eyes, and died. Queen Isolde came to Tristan's room, and saw his dead body. She sat down on the bed. And looked at him for the last time. Her sadness was very great, and her heart broke. She died next to him. What did I do? My terrible jealousy killed them both," said his older of the white hands, and she was very sorry. But it was too late. 
Tristan and Isolde were buried together in one grave, and over the grave, Isolde of the white hands planted two rose trees, a red one and a white one. They grew together with red and white roses. And this is the end of the great love story of Sir Tristan of Lyonnais and Queen Isolde of Cornwall.